Meme stocks are back and Google I.O. is here, and they decided to open it in probably one of the most interesting ways I've seen yet. Even more interesting than OpenAI deciding to open their announcement yesterday with a bunch of cool people on a stage. But I have to say, Google has really outdone themselves. After getting caught faking a demo and releasing a text-to-image model that was completely out of alignment with reality, they've completely come back. And look, it was easy to make fun of Google then, but Google, and specifically DeepMind, has more than delivered. It was interesting how much time there was between the release of OpenAI Sora with a few kind of famous directors releasing things they made with it. And what's cool is Google now has their answer to it. What's interesting is within that time, we've actually seen Tencent and other researchers in China actually release their answers to Sora, which were actually strikingly good and actually quite different. And for a lot of people, I think it seemed like we were in an era of text to video AI kind of stagnating. What's also really interesting is all of what was supposed to come from Stable Diffusion 3 was actually really quite underwhelming. And Google has completely obliterated that and I think now is finally showing that they're understanding how to ship, develop, and actually iterate on AI products. Where in the past they were completely out of alignment with maybe what their customers wanted or what made sense to their shareholders. Really Google I.O. is mostly about uh, releasing new things, telling people why it's important, and making their shareholders actually think that they have any clue of what's going on. So VO is this new text-to-video model and it's it's pretty incredible. So basically what they're big on is that it can produce 1080p clips right off the bat that are over a minute long. So even with all the context and the dynamic uh, motion mapping, it is in theory at that point as capable or more capable than Sora. Their primary focuses here are with photorealism, surrealism, and animation. And it's also capable of a range of cinematic styles. Now, to be fair, I don't really think this is as good as Sora, at least in terms of, of world building. One curious thing about this is what was crazy with Sora was you could actually take the video, um, create 3D nerfs of it, and its awareness of 3D objects in Sora was so good that you could actually create near perfect nerfs from them. So basically 3D representations of what was actually going on in the video, which was cool. And what's funny with VO is like many other text to image generation uh, models, it's really good at doing sea creatures. So why sea creatures are always seemingly the first kind of cool photorealistic thing that is done with these, um, I don't really know, but it's one thing that VO is quite good at. What's also interesting is, and I hadn't thought of this, is actually VO is also great at time-lapse prompts. And this is something that a lot of, basically before Sora, um, really more recent versions of Stable Diffusion that could do text to video, the notion of a time-lapse was kind of a very confusing thing for some of these uh, text to video models. It's also capable of multi-subjects. So for instance, this is a lone Cowboy rides his horse across an open plain at beautiful sunset, soft, light, warm colors. And it's nearly perfect, but what I'll say is aside from kind of the lens aberrations and a few things where the single subject is clear, I do still think Sora is generally better, where it understands kind of how to scatter it details for the human eye to be fully enriched and fully kind of taken in by the full experience. I think the coolest application of these models in time will be using them in VR and AR, but it is still really cool to see. Uh, and then also what's cool is this video of chicken that VO also created and um, landscapes are also quite good. What's interesting is um, Blockade Labs, I think, is fully explored to the extent of uh, making skyboxes with AI. And I think at that point, they're almost better than some of these video models. Where I think these video models really shine or where you can see what their real capability is, is when you have a single subject in a very complex kind of scenario where the camera is also moving. Camera movement for the longest time has been one of the hardest um, challenges for these models. It's really cool to see, of course, since it's a Google product, this is likely something we're going to have to wait maybe six months to a year for normal people to actually have access to. Obviously, uh, there is probably a single digit list of people who have actually been uh, approved to use Sora and an even smaller list of people who can actually share stuff they've made on Sora. but. Right off the bat, um, this was an incredible advancement from Google, and I think it bodes well for their progress going forward. Now, the next big announcement was Gemma 2. So the first iteration of Gemma, frankly, fell flat. And what's cool is obviously Gemma is the version of Gemini that Google plans to open source. And what's interesting is Google has opted to actually release Gemma 2 as a 27 billion parameter model, which they say is built on an entirely new infrastructure, and quote, outperforms models twice its size and can run on a single TPU host in Vertex AI. And TPUs are something I wanna talk about in just a few minutes because this is something else that Google has um, released. So they say it's optimized for TPUs and GPUs when obviously Google is kind of shilling 
something that may have been updated with their TPUs. First off, you should follow Daniel Han on Twitter if you don't and you like LLM stuff. But uh, what's cool is Daniel Han pinged in with another one of his inputs on how much VRAM anything takes doing AI. And uh, what's cool is he said basically uh, with Unsloth AI, you can fine tune uh, this 27 billion parameter Gemma 2 model from Google, likely with 24 gigs of GPU VRAM. So once we see it and once we get it, it's very likely this is going to be very usable and potentially more usable and fine tunable than Llama 3. And obviously in our last video, we talked about why fine tuning Llama 3 can be kind of difficult. And yeah, definitely check out uh, Unsloth if you haven't already. It's a great tool to use to speed up some of your work if you're fine tuning. Now, otherwise we don't actually know a ton about it. We just know that it's relative performance is performant against Llama 3 and uh, some of the later models from Mistral. And I'm gonna get into that just a bit later. Something that I think is most interesting, and that's actually not directly related to Gemini necessarily, is what Google DeepMind is calling Project Astra. So this is basically their attempt at matching, or I guess it's, it's their most similar release to OpenAI's release of GPT-4.0. It's basically a, a much more conversational, multimodal model that you can use seemingly in real time. There are questions on like how useful this actually is. There are some benchmarks available, but the idea is, you know, this is probably going to become something that's baked into most Android devices and uh, will probably benefit a lot of the Google ecosystem. Basically, the idea with this is making the interaction kind of human interface with these models much better, and then filling in the gaps of that with multimodal capability where it may have otherwise fallen short. Now, the other thing that's really cool and that actually I don't think has been mentioned enough is that Google also announced their new Trillium TPU. And they say here that it delivers 4.7x peak compute performance per chip compared to their previous state-of-the-art uh, TPU V5e and is equipped with 2x uh, high bandwidth memory capacity. So basically more memory, likely they're getting an efficiency gain. And of course with Google, um, yes, they have a ton of H200s, but they've also been building a new AI hypercomputer as they call it with these Trillium TPUs. And you know, TPUs are really an interesting thing at Google because what's funny with Google is if you've ever used them on GCP, so Google Cloud um, Forum, like their version of Amazon AWS. What's funny is even if you are able to access the TPU, so basically even if Google isn't using all of them, what's funny is there are actually a lot of terms and conditions when it comes to using these. So yes, it's great that these models will be able to leverage these. I'm sure Google trains a lot of their models with these. But ironically, like to this day, you actually can't do anything that has to do with autonomous vehicles. There are a bunch of AI subjects you can't actually use TPUs for. And generally speaking, the state of the, the most state-of-the-art TPU is usually never available to consumers. It's usually only available to Google and their partners, which to an extent makes sense. But the effect of this is that there's actually very little publicly available tooling so that kind of common folk like you and I, the GPU poor, can use these TPUs. And a lot of the time, uh, even like really overpriced, spot priced uh, NVIDIA GPUs are actually cheaper than using TPUs. So it's cool to see kind of another incremental improvement to performance here. And I'll link this kind of Google article that goes into more detail. Again, like the biggest thing here is higher memory bandwidth for memory in general. Um, they're using HBM, which is kind of cool. And generally just having more throughput. So more pixels in, more pixels out. It's one also curious thing with this is it's really hard to understand just because Google doesn't share much information about their deployments of these TPUs, whether or not A, they're actually profitable, B, if they're actually like GPUs, more profitable for inference as opposed to just training. And uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully what this enables is it enables Google to keep putting out more and more impressive work. And in theory, giving us more models that are totally open because I do kind of agree with George Hotz that there probably will be a day when we are no longer able to see these open models. Even if we're lucky enough to get to that same day and not have our GPUs licensed and uh, registered with the government like Sam Altman has been pretty open about wanting in the future. So I was frankly mostly blown away by VO. The Astra demo was quite interesting. For me, I, the play there is just, it's not as interesting to me. I think for people who maybe weren't open to using AI before. It's kind of a really interesting gimmick as a funnel that might get more people to start using these tools. Frankly, that's what I think OpenAI's play was with GPT-4.0. And let me know if you want me to cover that. Um, frankly, I just thought the OpenAI release wasn't really that interesting. Um, however, uh, yeah, if you're interested in that, let me know. 
Um, so yeah, let me know if you're going to be using any of this. Let me know if you uh, have a personal tool or have some different tooling that you think is better than VO or if you think uh, text to video AI is maybe not really still getting better. I was blown away by this, but um, obviously I'm not the one who has the only opinions here. So as always, I hope you learned something watching this video. If you like our content, please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you in the next one.